How's it going? It's Charles Botenston. Eric Bottomley. And we are going to be doing a weekly wrap-up of the most important things that I think should be talked about in the real estate community. Eric's going to bring his. We're going to bring two. We don't know which ones we're going to be bringing. He doesn't know mine. I don't know his. We're going to start. We're going to talk about it. Um, we're going to give our opinion and take stands, which is good. And I think a lot of people read the news, but they don't have any interpretation on the news. So I'll start if that's okay with you. So I'm going to start. Obviously, Compass has been in the news. Uh, people have their opinions about Compass. But this is actually a very interesting uh, subject that was brought up recently by The Real Deal. And they said that Compass acquired $300 million worth of acquisitions between 2018 um, as it IPO'd or right before it IPO'd. And ironically enough is that obviously Compass has been in the real estate, say, news about other things, say the, um, you know, obviously their stock and everything else. But to be honest, they went on such a meteoric rise that I think personally it was not only good for the industry because it's kind of been a legacy industry for, a, you know, the same giants have really dominated for decades. You know, we had something town residential, which came on the map and then kind of went off the map. So, you know, People want to see Compass fail, you know, personally, I think that speaks volumes on how aggressive they were in the beginning when they actually, say, came on to $300 million and things like that. What well, uh, Compass, yeah, they make the news, but uh, I would say Compass is a disrupt company that it is, but to, just to hear that $300 million, very interesting years because they did buy up some of the best brokerages in the world. So yeah. you go any, anywhere you go, teams. Any, any city you go, out in Park City, all the hot markets, you uh, see a Compass office. So that will end good investment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's kind of like, uh, you know, we've talked about it privately, but Sirhan, Ryan Sirhan, it's also another good thing to just disrupt and also show that you need to do pretty much everything. You, you need to be on social media. You need to be your own. You know, Gary has talked about it. Gary Vaynerchuk has talked about it a lot is you got to be the mayor of the city. You got to you got to know pretty much all the buildings. And that's not enough. You got to showcase the buildings. You have to bring video into the buildings. You have to you have to pretty much be everywhere. It's like omnipresent or you know, you know, a lot of, you know, when I was at a larger firm, you know, there was kind of a stigma about social media, but that's, you can't do that anymore. And, and you also have to have an entertainment aspect. You know, I think Compass brought that refreshing yeah, and aspect. Yeah, you know, they definitely have a brand. Yeah. Uh, now anybody yeah. who's ever sold or purchased a home has probably continuing to grow and when they're going to reap the rewards. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the first one. You want to? Uh, my article was from Axios, talking about how the housing market is stuck. You've been doing, but I've definitely known sellers and buyers have that disc. Sellers aren't coming down on the asking price, where the buyers are listening to the news and significant price drops, hearing about the potential housing crisis, the new crash. You know, yeah. we just came off of 2008, 12 years ago. Now everybody has these anticipation correct 25 yeah. and their waiting period of, are the prices going to uh the golden handcuffs great part of the article talks about how the sellers have low rates or they paid in cash yep and now they don't want to move yeah so it just there's no creates, incentive yeah and no incentive. these low carrying costs so yep. house prices are mostly too high to appeal to buyers who are facing skyrocketing mortgage rates but sellers loathe to lower asking sales are cratering some folks just walking away from deal and i'd say that's kind of the sentiment in the market is you put in your offer the seller doesn't come down as far there's no rush to jump into it yep. but at the same time it does note in the article that it isn't going to be like a 2000 not going to be where everybody had adjustables everybody need money you know some significant crash and that's basically because yeah i agree and they also were not giving away 100 percent finance right. so they're not underwater you know they i think the biggest point you have to make is that the rates were not adjustable they're mm -hmm. fixed all these homeowners who are in homes they have fixed rates that are way below the market so there's no incentive to pay higher rates even if the price is lower so it's as you said it's not going to be a crash it's just a changing market you know it, it honestly i went through that in you know the last one it was crazy it was mass chaos for months it was seven million people lost jobs four million homes were in foreclosure like banks were getting just like crushed you know countrywide and you know <laughs> it was it was wild to to witness because so much free money 
enter the market. And just on that note, you know, that sticks around. People who in case this ever yep. happened again, they weren't as stretched thin. People flipping, you know, 10 houses at a time. So everybody was a little more cautious. They've got these low rates. Uh, they can also rent it out, sky high rents, yep. like they never have before and make the best profit that they could get on. That is where the housing market is stuck. I'm definitely feeling that, but uh, you know, good. Break. Yeah, and, and just the, the last point on that is, I, I was talking, uh, I have a real estate coach and he was saying that this is the exact market that skills matter for a real estate. You can't hire your nephew if they're six months <laughs> into the business. Like you, the, the skill matters. I, I just had a deal where the exact scenario you said is that the seller didn't want to go up or the seller didn't want to go down, the buyer didn't want to go up. And we were in this purgatory for two days and I'm just play like pleading to the owner and I was pleading to the buyer's agent that we're, we're so close. We're literally 20K on a $1.1 million place. I'm like, it's only 20K, only 20K. I know it's not my money, but I'm like, come down 10, they come up 10. It's only 10K. You know, the, the mansion tax is 10K. You know, once you once you do that, but the opportunity that this buyer is now going to get because of this market by coming up just a little bit and the owner coming down is great. The owner really wanted to sell and the buyer really wanted to buy. Yeah, so, I'd say that's what it is. If you want to sell and hence that equilibrium comes in, you're thinking 20 grand, what's 20 grand? Yeah, yeah. And, and my second one, which was very similar to what you were talking about, <laughs> was the rising mortgage rates lockout home buyers, And it triggered layoffs in the banks. And I literally just went through this on a deal that closed on Friday, is that the buyer was locked in at a rate that she locked in, I think in June. And the new rate, the extension was like $600 a week to just extend her rate in the board. It was a big mess because the board was coming back late. Then the, then the management company was dropping the ball and we're, we're all over the place. The buyer's yelling at me, the seller, cause there was no buyer's agent on the deal. And all she kept on saying is that I don't wanna go through the process again because the rate is gonna be higher. So the biggest thing is, is that if buyers are not buying, there's gonna be bank layoff in the mortgage industry. There's gonna be mortgage brokers and bankers that are probably not gonna be in the industry um, because it's just, not as busy. I think there was a big over hiring potential. Um, well, the mortgage brokers have been very, very busy for the last, yeah. not only with new loans. Now that's it's a good point. The refis. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, the business boomed and that really goes to show the cyclicality saves some money. If you're in the business, I put some away because I don't know if the mortgage business. Yeah. What people have to understand as well is that the average rate is not 3%. Okay. <laughs> like if you really historically look at rates, that was unprecedented. You know, that, that's literally free money that was being given out, you know, before it was four to five, you know, and then you could even go historical where my parents paid, it. you know, I know people are like, oh, it's never going to be that high and everything else. But even at four and 5%, the reason it's high is because it was so low. And yeah. to your point is that literally created such a, an opportunity that I hope a lot of people took advantage of. But the, the other opportunity is that there's not any competition when you go and buy now. Okay, so you're not paying, you know, I, I, at the closing on Friday, the, the attorney was talking about the deal that their child was neglected because another buyer came in 100K over what they were paying. And this is like, I think, a, a, a $1 million place. They paid $100,000 more, you know, so it's, it's very, you're not going to have that competition, you know. That well, $1 million place is probably like nine fifty. dollars Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that buyer is, is off one hundred and fifty k. you know. And uh, I would say, though, I've got more emails and more uh, response from mortgage brokers and lenders than ever before. Yeah. So they uh, love they to are, reach out now. They are working very hard now, which I'm getting actually, happy birthday emails. I've never seen them work faster. So yeah. when you're actually purchasing, yeah. you can shop around, look for the best rate, yep. come up with these creative finance routes because uh, great you experience. Know, many of them are saying if you have X amount in the bank savings with them that they can give you a discounted rate, you can buy points so there's closing a lot of costs so that's a uh... waiving fees you know there's there's crazy amounts of going into it application fee appraisal fee you know you just throughout the entire process your fee 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 you just say hey listen <laughs> this bank isn't charging me or this lender isn't charging and they'll waive it because getting your business is the most important. so if you want to move on to your yeah no i uh, loved this article here some gen zers 
are hoping for a housing market crash. How many inter how many interviews <laughs> did they have for that? Did they so, just go down so the street? So that's funny that you actually asked that here. There is a survey of a thousand Americans to gauge the perceptions on a potential housing. According to their results, 78% of respondents think that we'll soon face a housing market crash, and nearly half believe it'll happen in 20. I. <laughs> so this is why we're doing the show. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. I mean, this is you know the amount of. Uh, fake news or uninterpreted news. That's the best way to well, say it. Well, that's exactly right. It's this is an article, when, when you read it, it's got a great headline, it grabs your attention, yep. you start thinking about the housing crisis, it goes on all those talking points, they even throw Gen Z in there. And uh, I read the article, I liked it, and then I thought for a second, I go, do I even know what age group Gen Z is? Yeah. Do you know what I'm, Gen Z is? I have no exactly. Idea. exactly. <laughs> so I had to look what, that they, up. Like 18? I looked that up. It is from 97 to 2012. Okay. You're basically a 10 year old. 11 to 25 years <laughs> old. <laughs> the 11 to 25 year olds are waiting for the housing crash yeah. so that they can afford something. This was done I mean, on TikTok. I mean, everybody, I think, on the buyer side who missed out on the pandemic, you know, getting those low rates, everybody is hoping for a housing. Yeah. Now, you know, if you want to move, if you want to purchase something, it's cost expensive. It's the most expensive purchase that you're going to have. It's something to be taken lightly. I've never worked with a Gen Z. Yeah. Maybe a couple of rentals, rentals, but yeah. uh, you know, I would focus on Gen Z should save their money yeah. because they can take advantage of any sort. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I think two things come to mind is a lot of people headline read. They don't actually go in and literally looking at the article, this is on the last page of the article. You know, it, the article, you know, you have to scroll down to actually see what the survey was. The first thing, and then the second is they're just being fed information about a crash. I, I would like to know how many people under the age of 25. Yeah. I mean, it'd be very interesting. How many homeowners? I, I know there's a lot of TikTok, Airbnb guys yeah. and this and that. I'd really like to see the numbers on who has the money. Yeah. And, and you know, honestly, I'm always going to stand by real estate. People need to live uh, in, in certain areas are obviously way more popular, you know, low taxes. Um, a lot of people moved out of, say, big cities like New York City. But to be honest, New York City is always going to have a lot of people coming to it because it's an island, first of all, or Manhattan is an island. That's the first thing. The second thing is it's so unique, you know, it, just like L.A. or Miami, it has its own personality. I, I love the city. You know, it's it's you know what I noticed is there's a lot of second. Yeah. There's a lot of people that they have their major homes, say, in Westchester or Miami or Florida or wherever. And then they have a second home in New York and they keep that second home it's you know they either pay it off or it's it's a smaller place low maintenance yeah gen z loves when your parents are. <laughs> yeah but i would yeah. also you know wrap this up by saying that gen z would be better off with it yeah but they really need this although they do have high income young kids have such high paying jobs well most of the money is going yeah yeah, it'll be interesting over the next couple of years. Well, that's uh, episode one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let us know I if did. there is. I know I did. Yeah, because we talk about this in private, and it's one of those things that we're we us as brokers are essentially dealing with the people that are actually in the market. It's not a talking head on TV or writing these articles that they're journalists. We're actually having the conversation about a seller who says. I'm not going down in the price and a buyer that says it's my market i'm not going up in price and you know a lot of them some of them i should say are cash you know they've been waiting for a moment where the rates are high there's no competition and they're not going to pay you know the the one home potentially that we're going to close is like in five six years that place is probably going to be about 10 percent higher you know they're, they're going to gain 10 percent in value <laughs> I don't know where you're going to have, and it's compounding too. You're talking about a few hundred thousand. So if you compare that against holding it in cash or putting it into Bitcoin or whatever else, we're not going to give advice, but I, I just see it as a great investment in real estate in the long run. So if you guys have any uh, articles you want us to talk about, definitely leave it, you know, send us an email till, uh, till next week. Have a good day and uh, we'll talk to you soon.